Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the gigantic Guardian Tactical Recon 40 OTF. Oh my gosh, your background is different. What happened? Are you changing your background again? No. This knife is completely and totally blacked out. And I've been trying to figure out, normally my background is that dark carbon fibery looking stuff. Every time I watch one of my uploads and I've got an all black knife on that background, it's just really hard to get the lighting exactly right. So I realized underneath the background is actually just this white background. So I thought, let's try that. And I think it actually uh, works a lot better. Um, so when I review knives that are really, really dark, it might look like this. Hopefully it looks pretty good. Uh, thanks so much to Luke for sending this guy in. I really appreciate that. Really, really interesting knife. People always ask me, do people just send you knives for free? No, I, I send them back to people <laughs> when I'm done. Most of the knives I review go back to the people who sent them in. So thanks, Luke. Also, thank you so much to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. If you are enjoying the daily knife content on this channel and you'd like to support me, there is, of course, a link for my Patreon right down in the description. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This is a huge OTF. Let's go ahead and give it a uh, get it a, a measurement here. Overall length of the Guardian Tactical Recon 40. Good lord, coming in at 9.6, perhaps 9.7 inches overall. Blade length is 4.1 inches. Cutting edge, 3.75 inches overall. This is huge. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. First up, the uh, Microtech. Uh, uh, combat Troodon. The Combat Troodon, technically, we're going handle to handle, is coming in at just over nine inches, right? Even if you want to count the the um, the uh, glass breaker here, <laughs> this is a huge OTF, huge. But comparing with the Recon, the, the Recon Forty is just an absolute meat monster. Huge knife. How about up against the Ontario Rat Model One? Rat One coming in at eight point six inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. Let's go ahead and compare it against another common OTF, the Lightning OTF. Lightning OTF coming in at about 8 inches overall. So a lot of you watching this may own the Lightning OTF. There you go. It's uh, the, the Recon 40 is an absolute monster of a knife. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, the Recon 35 is almost exactly the same length as the uh, Lightning, so that's a good comparison. If you own the Recon 35, the medium-sized one, right, there's about your size comparison. There is a Recon Elite coming in a little bit longer, about 3.75 inches overall, so you have to imagine with me about out to here. Uh, that's a different knife. How about up against the uh, Spyderco Pair 3? Spyderco Pair 3 coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. And last but not least, the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Mini Griptilian coming in at 6.75 inches overall. How's the action on this guy? First off, this knife is made in the United States. Um, this is a fairly expensive knife, but honestly, the price comes in pretty good. Um, I have, uh, you know, rules about, before we talk about action, I got rules about what knives I will and won't show on this channel. Every time I show an OTF, there's at least a couple of people asking me if I'm ever going to review a Cobra Tech or a Ravencrest, and the answer is no. Um, those knives are way too, and I know I'm going to spar spark up arguments, right? Those are way too similar to Microtech knives, and to me, um, they are they're they're riding on coattails. That's that's an attempt at a at a clone or trying to. So they're also not in the same tier, right? Uh, in terms of a good budget OTF, I think the Lightning's fine and it's doing its own thing, right? There's a lot of other weird in between stuff that's pretty original, right? Um, then those knives that we're talking about, those are those are too close to a clone. I'm just not interested, right? Um, and then uh, we have this this true upper tier. Uh, this is an entirely separate tier of OTF. This is American made, very very functional, uh, premium materials, and absolutely head and shoulders over some of those knives that some people might think are actually in competition with this. But tr in my opinion, and you don't have to agree with me, I've handled a ton of knives. Uh, if we're talking about Guardian Tactical, we're talking about Microtech, some of those upper tiers, right? No comparison whatsoever. So buy what you like, it's your money. But as far as I'm concerned, um, no, it's it's not the same thing and it's not something I'm going to show on this channel. Same goes with folding knives, right? If it's too close to a clone or if it's obviously a clone, it's not going to be shown here. 
no matter how you know good of a deal it might seem like. Anyways, the action is like nothing I have ever experienced, other than other Recon uh, series OTF knives. By the way, I will leave a link for this guy and all other Recon uh, Guardian Tactical Recon series OTFs right down in the description, so you guys can take a look at this if you want to. Um, this, uh, the thing that makes this awesome or the thing that makes these, um, Guardian Tactical OTFs awesome is, of course, the fact that they have a steel plate underneath the switch and between the steel plate and the switch are bearings. On top of that, you have a firing switch that is much more friendly to the human hand than any other OTF that I've handled, even your Microtech knives. Your Microtech knives are plain smooth and functional and they're fine. They feel good, right? This is a little aggressive. There's no switch or there's no steel plate underneath. There's no bearings. So there's simply, even though I can do this just fine, it takes a lot more effort versus it. This guy is almost effortless. I, I, I asked my wife, uh, who doesn't have weak hands by any means, right? Um, but I asked my wife, I said, I want you to uh, deploy the combat Truidon and this guy back to back. She has a huge amount of trouble with this, right? If you, if you work with your hands all day, this isn't gonna be a problem, right? But this guy, no problem. No problem with this guy. And on top of that, it's, it's I mean, it, the, the firing power is all there. This this has just as much, if not honestly, a little bit more firing power than my combat Troodon. But achieving, approaching that event horizon where it throws the blade is so much easier. And then the weight and mass of this gigantic blade comes firing out the end. There is a substantial amount of recoil. And also, the sound of it is wonderful. This is very satisfying to deploy. Probably the most satisfying OTF that I've ever felt in terms of action. It's the combination of all those things that gives me a, a completely and totally unique experience with an OTF. The action on this is nothing short of wonderful. It is so easy to actuate. Let's go ahead and talk about carry profile here. This is a thick boy. Uh, for an OTF, for sure. Up against the Spyderco Para 3, you can see they're definitely thicker. Let's do a comparison up against a Combat Troodon. Yeah, Combat Troodon, not quite as thick. This isn't crazy thick. It's not Medford thick, but it is very thick and very robust for an OTF. Uh, up against uh, two knives that have awkward carry profiles that nobody ever really seems to compare about, uh, compare about, complain about, the Spyderco Para 3 and PM2. Um, the PM2 and Para 3 are both shorter in terms of length than the Recon 40, but in terms of height, they have that awkward bump and the 40 doesn't have it. This is basically just a big, long, kind of fat rectangle, right? So it's going to be the overall length and width or, or thickness of it that's going to bother some people. And truthfully, a lot of people just aren't going to be able to carry this because it is a gigantic automatic switchblade, right? A lot of people look at it, they're like, are OTFs actually switchblades? Yes! <laughs> He's, if you're ever curious about this, this is the most switchblade of switchblades. It is absolutely a switchblade. So, if there are laws against switchblades in your area, this is definitely going to be a problem. And it's also going to be a problem for people who can't carry knives that have a, you know, this big of a blade, right? So it's just not going to be something a lot of people can carry. Um, we are looking at aircraft aluminum and steel for the chassis, and then we are looking at a pretty big LMAX steel blade. So there's a lot of material here. Um, let's go ahead and get a measurement of weight right here, or just get the weight, I guess. Yeah, heavy knife, 6.1 ounces. That's definitely going to be too heavy for a lot of people. It does fall within the weight range that is something that doesn't, it doesn't bother me. I like knives that are robust and are a little bit more heavy, right? A lot of people have different preferences when it comes to weight. If you're used to carrying knives like the Para 3 Lightweight or Bug Out, obviously this isn't going to be your cup of tea. If you're used to carrying full-size knives and you work outside every day and you've got more than just something like this on your person or you've got lots of different tools that you carry, you're probably just, if you're, if you're used to carrying larger knives, this just isn't going to be a problem for you. It is a pretty big object in the pocket, not, not in terms of, you know, height this way, but just overall length and then thickness, right? It is something that you will adapt to if you're used to carrying other knives of this size. It's just the way that it's going to be. So it depends on who you are. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools here. As per usual, my tools are very recommendable and very inexpensive. You can actually find them right down in the description. Um, let's go ahead and pull out a, unfortunately, T6, because I believe that's where the body screws are. T6, we're going to check this real quick. I do not want to put a mark on that frame. Yeah, those are going to be T6 screws. I don't like T6, but 
This is an OTF, and something that plagues a lot of Microtech OTFs is the fact that they are using proprietary hardware, right? So versus the Combat Truidon, another reason maybe some people might buy this over the Combat Truidon is because you can actually get into this if you want to. Whether or not their warranty will actually cover it after you disassemble it, I have no idea. I don't speak for Guardian Tactical, that's something you're going to have to ask them about. But if you have no other choice, right? If you're stranded in the jungle with nothing but your OTF and it gets jammed and you happen to have a Torx bit on you, then you might, you know, <laughs> you, if you need to get in it, you can, right? Um, as with all OTFs, these work on a fairly complicated chassis, so you you, you want to be careful. I've taken apart the Lightning and took a, you know, taken a pebble out of one one time. Um, put it back together. It was okay. I'm not saying the Lightning internals and these are exactly the same. In fact, I think these have a, a little bit more of an intricate system or, or more of a unique system on the internals there. So just be careful if you're going to do that. I'm sure there are disassembly videos online that uh, you know can help you with that. But yeah, for the most part, I would say stay out of that. Um, but, uh, anyways, I think that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and move on here to the anatomy. So these come in a few different, is my camera not like, oh, this is going to be a problem with reviewing with a, with a, uh, white background, right? Cause it doesn't want to focus. It doesn't want to do, doesn't want to do close. There we go. It kind of does. Can we, I wonder if we, should we turn the exposure up just a little bit more? Okay. There we go. That's a little bit better. Um, so this is, uh, the, uh, hard code anodized or type three hard code anodized aircraft aluminum, in this case, black. I've noticed with a lot of other guardian tactical knives, like the recon 35, they have a lot of different colors. I think there's a few, I think all, all the ones that I've ever seen of this guy are black, but they might have a few other colors, not nearly as many variations as the recon 35. As far as blades, I believe there is a drop point as you're seeing here. And that, and there is also a tanto. I think think. I know there's two-tone and then they've got kind of a dark tumbled finish. I've never seen a Recon 40 with a, a double edge or dagger ground blade. I know that they do have that in the Recon 35 at least, but I've not seen that in the Recon 40. If they don't have it, I think they should do it. If they do have it, then I'm just dumb and I haven't looked in the right places. Um, but uh, in any case, this is the drop point blade. It does have this just really kind of, I don't want to say decorative. It's really just an aesthetic sort of line right here it doesn't really serve any purpose but it makes it look nice right it gives it some extra character and i appreciate that um, this is using lmax lmax is a uh, powder formed uh, performance steel offered by bowler is that right is it bowler lmax i think that's right it's been so long since i've handled a knife in lmax that i just couldn't run in any case lmax has great edge retention it's nice and tough it's stainless this is absolutely a steel that is very welcome in this price range i have no issue with that in fact i think it makes a lot more sense on this knife than like 204P or M390. I just, I, I think S35VN and LMAX deals like that. LMAX and S35VN are somewhat comparable, but LMAX is gonna have better edge retention, generally speaking. Um, I think that's a much better steel than 204P for, for a knife like this. Um, blade stock, reasonably thick. I, th I wanna say it's probably 125 to 135 thousandths. We're gonna go ahead and measure that real quick because I didn't do that earlier. Blade stock thickness on the uh, Recon 40 is coming in at, oh, no, actually, it's uh, quite a bit thicker than that. Hang on. Let's do that again. Make sure here. Come on now. Got to make sure it's zeroed out. We're going to just give that one more shot there. Oh, yeah, 150 thousandths on the spine. There's definitely thicker than the, that's kind of an optical illusion there. It's definitely thicker than the Comet Troy. That's probably the thickest blade stock I've ever seen on an OTF. Obviously contributing to that feeling of firing power. There's a lot of weight and mass coming out, you know, which is why I have a little bit of recoil when I fire. It's really, it's like a pop when this thing comes out. It's really crazy. Um, but that's fine. A lot of robustness in the uh, blade. For anybody, you know, thinking that OTF knives are not hard use knives, and it depends on how you define hard use, right? Um, if you're, you know, attempting to use this thing as a pry bar or a boat anchor um, or, you know, something that you would use to scale a building, right? If that's how you define hard use, then no, I guess this isn't hard use. For continuous cutting and cutting at odd angles and kind of wrenching the blade around a little bit, these high-end OTF knives are way more durable than some people think. Uh, you can check out X-Ring, uh, his demonstration on Microtech knives with similar locking systems, right? This thing is every bit as durable, as far as I'm aware, as uh, some of the high-end Microtech OTFs, and you really can use this thing hard. The only thing you have to worry about is excess debris getting inside of um, you know, this area here and getting lodged in a way that's gonna slow the blade down um, you know, while it's coming out. But it's so smooth, and as far as I understand, that something that they do on the inside ensures that the blade always fires directly out, directly straight, so there's no 
movement on the way out. There's no, something would really have to get stuck in there to get it to, to not fire. And the firing spring is so powerful that a lot of times, you know, with, with light debris or pocket lens, it's probably just gonna shrug that off. That's just what it seems like. Flat carries out about maybe 70% the total length of the blade. Lots of material down to the tip, so I wouldn't call that a delicate tip by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it is fairly thick behind the edge. That's generally the case with an OTF knife and any knife that really doesn't have a lot of room to drop towards the edge right off the flat. But you're starting with a pretty um, thick blade stock. Not necessarily going to be a precision performance slicer. You know, for you professional grape shavers out there, probably not going to be your thing. Probably want to go with the open L. Kind of joking around a little bit there, but for your general EDC tests, any of your outdoor tests, you know, this is going to be just fine. The blade looks great. The edge is obviously professionally sharpened and the bevels are equal on both sides. So there's no sort of fit and finish issues. Uh, and this does have a DLC coating. Like I said, you can get them in two-tone full DLC or the tumbled finish. It really doesn't matter. Just pick the one that, you know, appeals to you. If you really need to be concerned with, um, you know, corrosion in your area, then maybe you want to go ahead with a DLC blade. Um, but I think the ones with the tumbled finish actually look best. Um, let's take a look at the handle here. We have these lines right here that just sort of, I don't know, they, they give this certain look to uh, Guardian Tactical Knives, but they are, it does offer a little bit of traction in situations where you want to hold it like this. And while this knife is just a big rectangle, the jimping is all in the right place. You have so much room. You can choke up right by the blade. The nice thing about this not being a double edge is you can actually rest your thumb at the top, right? You can hold it here in the middle. You can choke back on it. I mean, whatever you want to do upside down, I mean, it's all, it's all great. The switch up here does not create a hot spot. I mean, it's so nicely rounded off. It's just so friendly with the human hand. This is a very comfortable knife to hold. And honestly, I wouldn't think twice about taking this thing out and using it. The benefit of an OTF, a lot of people look at these and they immediately think weapon. The only thing that that could possibly be is a weapon. I completely and totally disagree. I have found so much utility in a knife that can easily deploy and retract with one hand. If I'm working outside and I've got one hand busy doing something, it is so convenient pull out an OTF, fire it, use it, pull it back in and put it back in your pocket. Arguably that is the, the this is the the knife that makes that process the fastest, right? It's just so easy to do. And I appreciate that. That that does give you a benefit, you know, when you're working, when your mind is on the task at hand and not necessarily on all of the little teeny tiny details of your knife or the little, you know, having to move something out of the way, right? If a cold steel tri leg, you push it or you could open it and then you got to push it and wing it down right or whatever, right? It's just easy. It's a lot easier than a lot of other styles of knives, right? Um, back here, uh, and by the way, at the seam work or like where these pieces meet up is just perfect. There's no fit and finish issues on this whatsoever. Um, pocket clip is attached with a couple of T6 screws and you absolutely can mount it on, you know, for left-handed carry, um, which is great. Uh, it's a blade like this, it's, you can carry it left or right-handed, it's fine. It doesn't come out the, you know, the center because of the way that the chassis is, and that's the same case with a lot of Microtech OTFs. There are some OTFs that it comes right out the center, but this one doesn't, it's fine, it's just, it doesn't really matter. Um, there's a glass breaker on the back. If there's gonna be a glass breaker, I prefer it like this. It's just a little ball bearing. It's not this big, you know, citadel sticking up out of the top of the knife, right? I just, nothing against Microtech. I like Microtech knives, but this is a better way to do that. Unfortunately, there's a lanyard hole being prioritized above the pocket clip, but the position of carry is pretty good. It certainly doesn't carry shallow, so it's no big deal. The pocket clip is fine, other than it does this sort of bill thing. It's okay. It's high enough that it's not going to fight most pocket seams, right? You might, some people might find a little bit of trouble with that, but truthfully, in and out of the pocket, it's going to be just fine. I've always thought that this odd, like, Halloween font that they use is a little bit funny. Okay, whatever. It's just a font, right? Um, I, I wish that... Honestly, I wish it didn't say anything. Um, I wish that maybe it just said Guardian Tactical somewhere on the blade, right? I, I, I don't know that I really like it on the pocket clip. I don't know that I want it to say anything, right? And then you've got the number. These, these are apparently numbered, so this is number 228. And then you have the patent number, or, well, it says patent pending, which I'm sure... Maybe it has to be on there. I don't know, but it kind of, I don't, I don't like that being on there, but maybe it has to be on there. So whatever. All the way around is solid, man. Here's the best thing about this. U.S. made automatic knife in its actual competition range, right? The Lightning OTF is not in competition with this. Your, uh, as much as people really want me to think it, your, uh, your Ravencrests and your Cobra Tech 
are not in direct competition with this. You're talking about lesser materials. They love to be mysterious about what type of material they're using for their, you know, for their, uh, the frame, right? Uh, they, they, and then they, they charge you just a random amount and those are made in, in China, right? Nothing against knives that are made in China, but, but, uh, you know, the fact that those knives are obvious clones, um, and you made in China using lesser materials, right? No, the only thing similar between those knives and this knife is that they're both automatic OTFs. But this is a much more premium US made OTF. A lot of unique elements here. The only, the only knife you're gonna find the, uh, the steel plate on, the only OTF you're gonna find the steel plate and the bearing switch on are these Guardian Tactical knives, which is reason enough to go ahead and spend some extra money. But on top of that, you're getting US manufacturing, premium fit and finish, premium materials, right? All of that. Everything just works flawlessly. The only OTF knives that I think are in direct competition with the Guardian Tactical knives are probably the Heretic OTFs, the Microtech OTFs, right? That's, that's, your, that's your actual um, uh, competition territory. The Combat Troodon, it's using the same aircraft aluminum, right? And it's using 204P. Uh, and in this case, I understand we're looking at a signature series. So actually, this particular one is a $600 OTF. But the standard combat Troodon is using the same material. They just don't have the hand ground blades, right? They'll, they come in at like 485 bucks. This guy, 100 bucks less, $380. Um, the, the largest knife in Microtech's line, um, you know, that, that compares with this one is the Dirac Delta or Dirac Delta. That comes in at about 350 to 380 so that's a, a good competition, right? Um, but versus the Combat Troodon that has that e equivalent robust feeling, right? Because the, the Direct Delta is a little bit skinnier. Not necessarily that bigger is better, right? Um, but uh, you're looking at very competitive prices. Um, the standard uh, Recon 35, that's, that's like 280 The Recon Elite, I don't know much about that knife. That one's actually quite a bit more expensive. But this Recon 40 coming in at $380. Yeah. I got no issue with that price whatsoever. A lot of times I say... You know, uh, it's a little overpriced. Uh, it could be twenty dollars less. I got no issue with it. I would have honestly, if you were to hand me this, just just thinking about like the Benchmade Infidel, which we're not even going to talk about. I, tr guys, I'm not a fan of the Benchmade Infidel. I think that knife is ridiculously overpriced. It's just, I mean, but if we're going to talk about OTFs in the same size range, right? That are similar, have similar pricing. That are American made. Benchmade Infidel, Microtech Combat Troodon, and this guy. 100 bucks. I honestly, this it's just a better deal all the way around. I'm still going to buy Microtech knives and I wouldn't shy away from a Combat Troodon because I just like it, right? But are they, are they, is the Combat Troodon a little bit high on the price? Yeah. This guy picking it up, I would automatically assume, uh, given the information, I'd be like, that's probably a four to $450 knife. 380 surprises me. Um, and I, I think that's excellent. I just, I don't have a problem with it. It's a very recommendable knife. This is going to be going on two playlists. <clears throat> It's going to be going on my uh, most recommended knives playlist and my favorite knives of all time playlist. I love this thing. This thing is awesome. If you like big, meaty, robust knives, you like fully automatic U.S. knives, and you can carry an automatic knife of this size in your uh, in your area, this is money well spent. You're gonna you're absolutely gonna love this. Absolutely recommendable. So you can find this knife in both of those playlists. Check that playlist out if you want to see what else I recommend. What else is my favorite? Guys, that's going to be pretty much it today. Um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram. Like I said, you can find this guy right down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do not like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.